Let C be this 4x4 matrix. Use elementary row operations to transform C into an upper triangular matrix. Hence calculate the determinant of C. So it says to use row operations. Let's do row operations. I'll copy my matrix C. So it says to use row operations to transform it into an upper triangular matrix. So we don't have to go all the way to the reduced row echelon form. We just need an upper triangular matrix. So we ask, what is an upper triangular matrix? Well, an upper triangular matrix has all of its non-zero entries on the diagonal or above. So here's the diagonal. And here's above the diagonal. An upper triangular matrix has all its non-zero entries there, and all the rest of the entries, the ones below the main diagonal here, are supposed to be zero. So I just need to put zeros in all of these places that I've just boxed in blue. Let me do it one column at a time. I want there to be zeros here. I already have a zero here, and a zero here, so all I need is to put a zero here. And I could do that by adding a good multiple of row 1 to row 3. But you know, it's going to be easier to divide row 1 by 5 so I can see what that multiple is. So let me do that first. My new row 1 is equal to a fifth of row 1. So let me do that. That would be 1, minus 2, 2, minus 3. And none of the rest of the rows have changed. So I want zeros in all these positions, and I want in particular a zero here. And I can do that now by doing row 3 plus 3 of row 1. So my new row 3 is row th 3 plus 3 of row 1. So I've only changed row 3, so I'll put the other rows in now. And now I'll do row 3 plus 3 of row 1. So minus 3 plus 3 times 1 is 0. 6 plus 3 times minus 2 is 0. 2 plus 3 times 2 is 8. And 0 plus 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. So I have zeros in the positions I want in this column. Now let's go on to the next column. So I want zeros here. Well, I have a 2 here. I could get that to be a 0 by swapping row 2 and row 4. So my new row 2 and row 4 is equal to my old row 4 and row 2. So I haven't changed rows 1 and 3, so I'll put them in now. And my new row 2 is my old row 4. So that's this, and my new row 4 is my old row 2, so that's this. So now I have zeros here and here. All I need now is a zero here, and it'll be an upper triangular matrix. So to get a 0 there, I could do row 4 take 2 of row 3. So my new row 4 is row 4 take 2 of row 3. So I'm only changing row 4, so I'll put the other three rows in now. And now I can do the row operation. So 0 minus 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 times 0 is 0, 16 minus 2 times 8 is 0, and minus 8 minus 2 times minus 9 would be minus 8 plus 18, which is 10. So now I have a matrix in upper triangular form. I have zeros below the main diagonal, and all the non-zero entries are above the main diagonal. So why do I want an upper triangular matrix? Well, that's because it's really easy to calculate the determinant of an upper triangular matrix. All you do is multiply the diagonal. 
So I'd go 1 times 2 times 8 times 10, and that will be the determinant of this matrix. 1 times 2 times 8 times 10, which is 160. So the determinant of my final matrix here is 160. All I need to do now is figure out how to turn that determinant into the determinant of my original matrix. And I've done all these row operations, so all I need to do is find the row operations that go from here back to my original matrix and what they do to my determinant, and that will find the original determinant. So all I need to do is find the inverses of all my row operations. So the inverse row operations, let's start with this one. The inverse of that would be to add 2 of row 3 instead of subtracting 2 of row 3. So my new row 4 is equal to row 4 plus 2 of row 3. Now let's find the next one. This row operation is a row swap, so the inverse is to swap them again. New row 4 and row 2 is equal to row 2 and row 4. And now I need the inverse of this one, and that would be to subtract 3 of row 1 instead of adding 3 of row 1. So my new row 3 is equal to row 3 take 3 of row 1 and finally I need the inverse of this one which would be to multiply by 5 instead of dividing by 5 so my new row 1 is equal to 5 of row 1 and now using these row operations I can find the original determinant so each of these row operations does something to the determinant. So let's do them one at a time. This row operation, being uh, adding a multiple of one row to another, does nothing to the determinant. So the determinant after this row operation is still 160. This row operation uh, being a row swap, will multiply the determinant by minus 1. Okay. This row operation, being subtracting a row, one row from another, would be uh, would have no effect on the determinant again. And finally, this row operation, multiplying a row by 5, also multiplies the determinant by 5. Uh, minus 160 times 5, which is minus 800. So therefore, the determinant of my matrix C is minus 800.